the Labour Party has never wavered in its acceptance of women and men on terms of absolute equality. It is confident of the support of the newly enfranchised women voters, not as a matter of gratitude, but as a matter of common sense. Those women who impartially study the promises and performances of the three political parties are in no doubt as to which offers the greatest opportunity for a nobler social order. The vast majority of older women have lived through the fight to abolish half-time, to regulate the sweated trades, and to clean up the factory and the mill. They see the improvements which the efforts of their generation have secured for their children, who today inherit not only better social conditions, but also the sovereign power of full citizenship. They in turn must fulfill their obligations and render to the state the service of an intelligent decision on the great political issues of the day. In home affairs, the outstanding problem of unemployment overshadows all else. Who can understand the bitterness in the home of the unemployed, as does the wife and mother when she watches her men folk being crushed under the humiliation of daily rebuffs? She shares, nay, she takes the lion's share too often, of that utter lack of things needful for the body, which ensnares and entangles the life of the soul. O oh, women, give the Labour Party power to protect the homes of the workers from this desolation of poverty. The immediate raising of the school leaving age accompanied by an extension of maintenance scholarships and of old age pensions on a more adequate scale are two of the urgent steps which a labor government would take, thus helping to empty the pool of unemployed labor at both the beginning and the end of industrial experience. The Labor Party confidently asks for the support of women in a great widening of opportunity for all children so that their potential power for physical, moral, and intellectual growth may be developed and that the nation may be enriched by a wider culture and a finer spirit of service. This involves steady expansion in the public services of provision for maternity and child welfare, for education, for the training and equipment of the young worker and for the improvement of the standard of health. To this, the Labour Party is pledged. Is there a woman today who does not hate war? There may be one such, whose material condition has been so vastly enriched by profiteering that it has blinded her to its horror. But to most of us, such riches are a mark of infamy. The Great War wasted 80,000 millions of wealth and destroyed 30 million lives. Yet nations are more effectively armed to fight than in 1914 and with the more deadly methods of bombing and poison gas. Kellogg, Pax and Locarno are not enough in 1924, the Labour government brought the spirit of reconciliation to a torn and battered Europe. Won't you give Labour the chance to complete the building of peace? It is the only party in the state which can restore the confidence which will make disarmament possible. Every woman who cares for her country can now help to save it. Work and vote for the Labour candidate and put the Labour Party in power with the clear mandate of a majority vote of the country. <laughs>